and welcome. So today, Hoyle joins me again. Thank you. And we are going to talk about antioxidants and free radicals. So we'll start off the conversation with um, explaining what free radicals are. Let's get into this. So basically, free radicals are molecules that are produced in our body as a result of biological processes mm -hmm. um, that in turn um, make a, a reactive oxidative species, ROS. Mm -hmm. um, even though some some of these free radicals are fine to have in our body, our body can take care of it uh, through antioxidants. We'll talk about it a little bit more. But the accumulation of these free radicals starts to cause oxidative stress in our body, and thus in turn damaging our cells and, uh, and our DNA, basically uh, rusting from within. So, and we kind of alluded to this uh, out during one of our last uh, videos where we, I gave the example of the apple rusting when we leave it out, right? Correct. Um, so that's basically, again, what's happening inside. And yes, it's our, the normal process for our, our body to go through this cell turnover. However, when we're exposed to these free radicals in excess, in excess yes. or we're not taking care of our body um, sufficiently to where it's in optimal health mm -hmm. where it causes a problem yeah the, the accumulation of these free radicals is a problem and you know we have a, a, you know a certain things that that can produce these free radicals such as the the smog um, our environment right? our environment mm -hmm. uh, our um, stuff that we apply on our skin uh, the water um, uh, but the main one is our foods yeah our foods are what we we, we consume and give us the majority amount of our free radicals and usually that's based on the diet high in sugar <laughs> high in carbohydrates mm -hmm. so the way I would think of it and hopefully this kind of motivates people to start avoiding ex consuming excess sugar is mm -hmm. Every time you consume a uh, something that ha is high in sugar or high carbohydrate, think of getting another wrinkle, okay? So free radicals age us faster. Um, and so, you know, for me to know that, you know, it's like, okay, well, I gotta limit some things because I don't wanna age before my time. And so we're seeing that a lot. So not only are pollutants, obviously the things we eat, high carb, high sugar diets, um, but also stress. Stress is terrible. It has such terrible negative effect in our lives. And so if we're f not feeding our body correctly, properly, mm -hmm. then when we are stressed or we find ourselves in stressful situations, our body, if it's already been overly oxidized, as you said, with these overly free radicals, rusted, yeah. overly rusted, uh -huh. then we're, we're not going to be able to handle these stress, you know, these situations. And, and unfortunately, whenever one is stressed, that's when you reach for those bad foods that oxidize you. So yeah, we need to uh, avoid as much as possible these um, these oxidative agents uh, that we're exposed to, and the main one would be our foods. <laughs> so eliminate those things that obviously are not beneficial to you. Try to mitigate and learn how to um, minimize your stress. Uh, so that you know you're not sitting there pro in prolonged moments of stressful situations because we i mean we're we're human right we're going to encounter those but it's how we're going to deal with them that's going to matter but then also how we're feeding our body you know that it's going to have to help us so i want to leave you guys with a little bit of a list of um, antioxidants that you can consume to help your body and again this is all in moderation not because something is healthy means that we're going to over consume it because then that leads to you know over consumption of calories that's a whole nother topic correct so so basically just to <laughs> let the audience know as well so when we have these reactive oxidative species we have to find some substances and things that will uh, oppose that and will help with the the antioxidant. With the so basically, just before you jump in, one of the uh, antioxidants, a potent one, is vitamin C. Let me use an example real quick. You were talking about the uh, apple that rusts if you yes. get it out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, you know, oxygen uh, reacts with the apple and it turns brown. Yes. If you actually squeeze some lemon on that uh, on that apple, it'll take longer yeah, to to rust. to rust to oxidize. So that's why. Antioxidants such as vitamin C are so potent to help um, reduce uh, yeah. this oxidative 
stress. So it protects us, basically. That's Correct. what it's doing. So mm -hmm. I would uh, encourage you to do this as a little experiment at home. Cut an apple, you know, one that's been, you know, uh, where you have lemon in it and the other one that doesn't and let it sit out there and see how long it takes um, for it to, you know, turn brown to, yeah. mm -hmm. to, to rust. So, so in addition to the vitamin C, which obviously we find in most citric foods um, and also um, like bell, pep bell peppers and stuff like that, um, but vitamin A, so all your uh, beta carotene, you know, in your carrots, your tomatoes, your melons, mangoes, vitamin E, which you will find in on uh, asparagus, uh, spinach, avocados, which is one of my favorite, and broccoli. Again, I, I want to emphasize this is about um, quality and then also quantity. So please don't overconsume them either. They just make sure that you eat these throughout the, the week or throughout the day, but not all at once. Flavonoids, so important, okay? And you find these in green tea. And I would specifically say matcha, okay? That has the highest of these flavonoids. And then wine, but again, in moderation. So red wine has these flavonoids that are um, antioxidants. Um, you will find them in cranberries and blueberries and raspberries, blackberries, chocolate but make sure it's dark chocolate at least 60 i would go even yeah. higher to 70 percent or it's higher off. and only one ounce so yes we can still consume chocolate but it's small quantities and it has to be um, good quality so mm -hmm. um, also nuts specifically um, walnuts and if you think about this walnut when you crack it open what does it look like it looks like a brain, right? So think about that. It's it, They're very beneficial, but again, small quantities, I would say four to five a day. We don't need to overconsume those. Um, strawberries, but again, uh, st strawberries, make sure they are organic because of the content on, of pesticides found in um, on, on strawberries. And that just came out, uh, the Dirty Dozen, Strawberries are on top of the list again. It's number one. So make sure if you're going to consume those that they are organic um, also um, some dried fruit um, and One thing I would recommend that you probably have in your cupboard now is cinnamon and clove and turmeric tea so I would drink that once a day, cold or hot, doesn't matter. Uh, but they have really great antioxidant properties and it's so simple and most of us have that um, in our kitchen now. So um, I hope this helps. Uh, any questions, anything else that you want um, more specifics on or have questions on, let us know, yeah. give us your comments. Anything else you wanna let add? Let me quickly <laughs> add, um, the, the uh, antioxidants that you mentioned, especially vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, you can buy in supplement form, but that's not the best way to get it. Biologically, you would not, you need to get it from your foods. That's the most bioavailable form to get these yeah. uh, potent antioxidants. So again, I mean, if you don't have access to foods, I mean, you can get a supplement, but the best way to get these is through your foods. That is correct. So again, small quantities, but make it a habit of, of you including these um, throughout your day, um, every day. So I hope this helps. Thanks.